One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. What's up guys, it's Harry Haas here. And today I'm just gonna be kind of going over another weekly recap. Um, you know, some stuff that, that I've learned, um, I'm going to talk about, um, I know this is a, a week, a recap of last week, but I'm also going to be talking about like a bit of the action this week, uh, how I've been kind of finding it. I'm going to be talking about, uh, um, how I kind of beat over trading and how I kind of got over that hurdle and that mindset that is very, very difficult to beat. Um, it's not an easy thing. Um, when you're, when you're very stressed out. Uh, when you're when you you know you're just over trading so much so much so much you make a little bit and then you end up giving it all back. Um, I've been getting some DMs about that um, on the long side and how I've been able to kind of beat that, how I've been able to kind of navigate through those kind of uh, I guess those kind of paper cut phases of my trading and how I've really been able to kind of grow right. Um, so uh, again, uh, let's get right into it. So how I kind of beat over trading. Um, Number one, the number one thing that I did to kind of beat over trading is say to myself, okay, I am going to set a max number of trades per day and stick to it. Um, you know, this will make you very, very picky and selective if you can't actually stick to it. If you say to yourself, well, um, there are some people who like to trade um, in different ways. I know some people who like to have a max number of trades on a ticker some people who like to have a max number of trades on a particular idea, and some people who like to have a max number of trades throughout the day, right? And so I guess for me, what I found was kind of like helpful for me is because when you're a long trader, um, you know, obviously it's the same market as shorting, but there's a lot of things that can just pop up and die. And it's very easy to get into the trap of like trying to long everything that pops up, right? So for me, what I kind of did is I said to myself, okay, well, you know, I'm going to be more selective on these tickers. So at first I limited myself to five trades per day when I was first starting to do this, um, I think about three years ago, um, because I found that I was over trading a little bit. And I said to myself, okay, I'm just going to limit uh, the number of trades I have to five trades a day. That's it. I'm giving myself five ideas and any more than that, I know that I'm going to be emotional. I know that I'm going to get on a tilt. Um, and I know that that is also not good for my account as well. So I said, okay, I'm going to set a max number of trades. And what would happen is that, you know, you hit the max and you'd find that there's always another opportunity that would pop up. And sometimes that opportunity would be really good. Other times, not so much. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. I think if you have five really, really good selective trades, um, you don't have that problem of wanting to continue with the opportunity and to, to continue trading. But if you do, you know, five kind of sloppy, uh, you know, subpar trades, you know, you're going to want to keep trading to try and make it back, make it back, make it back, make it back, because that's just human nature, right? And so I think, you know, kind of like uh, something like this is definitely something that you can incorporate into your process. But I think that you know, you need to really have the discipline uh, to say, okay, you know, I've hit my max number of trades for the day um, and accept the result. I did really good or I did really bad. Again, this is just one strategy. You don't have to do it. But if you are going to do it to prevent kind of the overtrading, um, I would definitely recommend that, um, you know, you do stick to this, this, this number, right? Because it's going to grow discipline. And if you don't stick to it, then... Um, really for the most part, I guess like you're, you're kind of screwed, right? Um, trade the process and not the PL. I think this is a big one because, um, this kind of comes in terms of, of, of chasing where, um, 
what you can do is, is, is get into the habit of just trying to say, okay, um, you know, everyone is here for the money. I mean, that's obvious, but, um, you know, in the trading world, um, sometimes the amount of time you, you spend at the desk does not, uh, equal the amount of money that you're going to make, right? So I guess for me, it's really always been about the process, you know, support and resistance. It's been about the volume, stuff like that. Um, you know, it's like, it's like it's a, a video game where you get paid for making good decisions. And once you make a bad decision, once you do something wrong, um, you know, you end up paying for it in real life, right? So you really need to focus on the process and not the P&L. The P&L should be a score of good process and it should be a good score of just doing the right thing over and over and over again like we teach right I mean um, you can always get in the habit of seeing a couple green prints go on the tape you know going in long chasing having no particular plan having no particular strategy and then end up losing on that type of trade and that's something that can be very very easy to do so what you always want to try and do and say to yourself, okay, you know, if, if you have a plan to buy at 5.3, you know, take it at 5.3. But if something completely random happens, if something completely insane happens, and you just jump right in without a plan, um, without any context, you know, you're going to probably end up losing on, some, on, on, on something like that, right? And a lot of the times, these kind of unprocessed trades or these non-P&L, or, you know, these focusing on the P&L trades, they end up having like almost like another stressor underneath them, right? Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.